Glad you're here for another lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe before we get started. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn all about scatter plots in lesson 29. And I thought we could start out with a sports example of points scored in a basketball game. Notice how we have to have a good title. We also need some labels on our x axis and our y axis. So my x axis, I'm going to make hours practice this week and we're going to be getting ready for the game on the weekend and so my y-axis will be the uh, points scored in the game okay now my next step is to get some dots on this scatter plot so one of the players practiced one hour this week and he scored two points then we've got someone who's, who practiced for two hours and scored four points, three hours and scored four points. Another person also practiced three hours and they scored six points. Then we've got five hours with eight points. Let's get some more, the rest of the players on here. Someone practiced for six hours this week and they scored eight points in, in the game. Um, someone practiced for seven hours and scored 10 points. Okay, we have a few more. Another person practiced for seven hours and they scored more. They scored 12 points. And then we have someone over here who practiced for nine hours and scored 16 points. And then we have someone who practiced for 10 hours this week. That's a lot of practice. And they scored 20 points. Okay, and then we have one more person who practiced for two hours and ended up scoring 12 points. Okay, and before we move on, let's review the parts of the scatter plot. We've got to have that title. We've got to have labels on our X and Y axis. Okay, we need to make sure we have an X axis and a Y axis with a scale. And then of course we have to have the dots. We need the data to be represented. Then I want you to look at the dots. Do you notice any sort of a trend happening? Look at that line I just drew. So you can see an upwards trend, and I'm gonna ask you a question about that in just a second. But then I also see a dot kind of all by itself over here. We're gonna call that an outlier. It doesn't really go with the trend that we're noticing. Okay, now I want you to see if you can finish this sentence for me. The more hours practiced. What do you notice with the points scored? Pause the video and think about that. So you might have said something like the more hours practiced, the more points the players were scoring. And that's exactly what I mean by a trend. My next question for you is, what ordered pair matches the outlier? Why don't you pause the video and write it down? All right, we have 212, great job. Two hours practiced, 12 points scored in the game. All right, my last question for you is, if someone practiced four hours, what would be a reasonable amount of points they might score? So check out the trend and see what you think. Okay, let's see if we got the same thing. So for A, it says two points, and I'm thinking that's way too small for the trend. That would be below the trend line. B says 18, that would be an outlier above the trend line. C says six, and that is actually right on that trend line that I drew 
four, six, the ordered pair, four, six is right there, so that's awesome. And then, of course, D is 14, and that is still too high for that trend line. That would also be an outlier. So C is the best choice. Great job. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.